When children go back to school, the technology in the classrooms should be safe, wired, not wireless technology. The Palo Alto PTA recently released an infographic on safer ways to use computers. It talks about using a hardwired connection, keeping a distance from the router because routers emit radio frequency radiation just like Wi-Fi computers do. Many teacher unions have taken action on the issue of radio frequency radiation wireless uh, in the classrooms. The United Educators of San Francisco in 2018 actually passed a resolution on safer technology um, calling for consideration that the California Department of Health cell phone advisory, it describes how to reduce exposure to your cell phone, that that be disseminated among all teachers and staff and, and students and actually be in every classroom. I did a webinar with Dr. Cindy Russell of Physicians for Safe Technology for UESF teachers on enhancing technology safety in schools and you can watch that online. I presented at the American Federation of Teachers National Conference in Washington, D.C. in 2019, and you can go to sharemylesson.com to see the teaching materials from our presentation on technology and environmental health, increasing awareness, and improving safety for teachers and students. And I covered everything from blue light to uh, physical impacts to, of course, impacts from the radiation. The New York State Teachers Union in 2014 actually did a press release on best practices for schools they have guidelines for safer use of wireless technology that was developed for them. There even was a web, webinar with Dr. Magda Havas. It is on their website. You can go to their website and watch it. And it's on the risk of wireless technologies and protecting children and staff in schools. I'd like to read you what Paul Pecoral, Vice President of the New York State United Teachers Union, stated. We have enough evidence to justify taking action and we're not willing to wait until our members, their children, and the students suffer health consequences from not doing anything. We have all of this on our website. The United Federation of Teachers has uh, Dr. Moskowitz from UC Berkeley. His information on reducing exposure to wireless radiation and the Baby Safe Project recommendations. There are many resolutions by Canadian teacher unions, which is all on our website as well. The Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation actually called for a moratorium on Wi-Fi in the Limestone School District. Children are more vulnerable because they have smaller heads, thinner skulls, they have a rapidly developing brain. They even have more conductivity actually in their bodies. Um, and so they absorb more wireless radiation compared to adults. However, this is really a teacher health issue as well because they are working and don't have control over the electromagnetic environment. In fact, they haven't even been informed and they are not aware that wireless signals have been found to cause harm in many, many studies. And these studies are currently being ignored by the U.S. government. That is why Environmental Health Trust is actually part of a historic legal action against the Federal Communications Commission on this issue. In fact, in our case, I specifically reference the letter to Montgomery County Schools, of which I have sent you again, because the FCC says that federal agencies are in agreement that there's no problem with the wireless radiation limits that we have, when in fact, these agencies have not reviewed the science. Now you might go to the FDA website and say, well, everything's fine. There's no problem. The FDA says it's fine. There's one problem. The FDA, well, a lot of problems. The FDA didn't even look at impacts to brain development. They didn't, they state that they reviewed the science, but if you actually look at what they actually did, they don't even look at the impact to brain development of which there are numerous studies showing harm to the brain. And this is what we educators and parents should be most concerned about. Remember lead, there is no safe level of lead. There is no safe level of a toxic agent that harms the brain. There are many scientists who are calling on the FDA to actually retract their report for many reasons, which if you're interested, I would be glad to give a full presentation on that issue. So ask yourself, when ever have regulations been in step with reality, especially when it comes to environmental health exposures where there are companies with billions of dollars at stake? Please learn more about this issue. I am absolutely available. I live right here in Montgomery County, and I am glad to give you a full presentation on this issue. This is absolutely our responsibility. Saying that it is not your issue or not my issue is unacceptable at this point. 
You might go to the World Health Organization and say, hey, they think it's safe, except there's one problem. That is that the World Health Organization EMF project fact sheets, which you are looking at, are actually written by, well, we think only one person because nobody really knows who wrote them. In fact, try asking them who wrote those fact sheets and they won't answer. In 2011, the Cancer Institute of World Health Organization, with the help of 31 experts from uh, all around the world, uh, classified radiofrequency radiation um, including mobile phone radiation, as possibly carcinogenic. And uh, three weeks later, it was very strange because the World Health Organization headquarters issued a fact sheet that dismissed the cancer risks and the cancer classification. Whilst the IARC classification covers all radio frequencies, fact sheet 193 only refers to mobile phones. This creates the impression that the classification does not apply to other uses of radio frequencies, such as masts, Wi-Fi, DECT phones, radars, and industrial uses. But the sentence, to date, no adverse health effects have been established as being caused by mobile phone use, fails to reflect the accumulating body of evidence. This who wording is strangely reminiscent of the discourse of the manufacturers who demand the highest level of scientific evidence. In effect, que, que vous, and the very fact that you can interpret this sentence as contradictory cette phrase comme contradictoire, ça veut dire que that means that it's not very clear et and it is even a bit misleading. Un peu trompeur. Alors, on a demandé, so we asked the WHO in Geneva to correct that part of the fact sheet. Uh, soit corrigé dans leur, uh, uh, their fact sheet. Um, mais malheureusement, but unfortunately, I've checked, the sentence is still there. This key sentence has enabled manufacturers to deliver a message downplaying the IARC classification, which actually recognizes some tentative evidence for the increase in cancers due to exposure to radio frequencies. I wanted to know, I asked the responsible person at the World Health Organization, Emily van Deventer, who were the experts that wrote this fact sheet, this new information that was uh, contradicting the, the, the Cancer Institute classification, and I had no answer. Emily van Deventer is the current head of the EMF project within the World Health Organization. In June 2006, she replaced Michael Repacholi, who she had assisted since the year 2000. So when I met Emily van Deventer in Brussels five months later, I confronted her with my email and I said uh, I, I didn't never get any reply to my question and I repeated my question. Who are the experts that you consulted and helped you write this fact sheet? And she still refused to answer to this very simple question. Who are the experts? This one was just updated. Yes, but who, who wrote it? I am in charge of the, the fact sheet. You wrote and it? The sentences that They're updated with the... It is a corporate fact sheet. It is not my fact sheet. Yes, but who, who wrote it? Who changed the sentence? Yes, was it you or did you consult external experts? I changed experts? the sentence. I consulted with a number of experts. Who were they? And I yes. had to ask my administration if that is a, a, an acceptable yes. uh, question. Emily van Deventer has no specialist knowledge in the field of health. She is an electrical engineer with expertise in electromagnetic fields. She is a member of the IEEE the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, which originally set the international standards for public exposure to mobile phones. Emily van Deventer was a lecturer in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department of the University of Toronto in Canada. Here she carried out research financed by the telecommunications companies Bell Canada and Nortel before joining the WHO. During her public health role, Emily van Deventer remained in close contact with scientists who work for the industry. She co-wrote an article questioning the principle of precaution 
with some vocal defenders of the interests of electricity companies. In 2006, she joined Michael Repacholi and Peter Valberg from the product defense consultancy Gradient in signing an article supporting the theory that electromagnetic waves pose no danger to the public. I also have repeatedly written Dr. Deventer and she has never replied to my emails directly asking who wrote those fact sheets. There's actually several fact sheets online of the WHO EMF project. Scientists who worked on DDT and asbestos are calling out the World Health Organization EMF project as well as ICNRP as being industry connected with conflicts of interest. And that's of course because the, the person who started it, who is now an industry consultant, actually had money illegally funneled through a hospital. But this is a long story that we'll have to talk about later. But the point is, there is so much money involved that the American people, in fact, the people of the world don't even know what to believe. And that is because there has been a complete smoke screen that has gone up around this issue. And if you want the facts, you have to dig deep to find them. I was interviewed by a Swedish journalist uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said, she said all the time, like a mantra, that the majority of researchers say that uh, this is safe. There is no risk whatsoever with anything with radio frequencies. She had interviewed before me a Swedish uh, prominent person, Maria Feisting. And but what you can think of is that this is a major is not the majority. They are quite few. Uh, the majority have, for example, uh, signed the uh, EMF science appeal, which is almost 250 scientists that have signed it and all with their own research in this area. I mean, if you can't do anything else, you create doubt. I mean, like a book which is written, doubt is their product, which comes from, from industry. So I would say that uh, the situation just now is more alike than, than this. And we need uh, people to waken up. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the scientific data are there. It's clearly uh, this type of radiation is dangerous to human health and maybe to nature. And uh, I would say that, uh, that uh, it's time to act. Hundreds of scientists are stating that the levels of electromagnetic radiation and wireless radiation that we are being exposed to is not safe, that it is harmful because of the science which has found effects at levels far, far lower than FCC limits or limits uh, put forward by ICNRP. Now, when you look at the International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation, that's ICNRP for short, you might think, well, of course this organization with a very big and fancy name knows what they're talking about. The problem is, as was stated with the WHO EMF project, it was started with industry connections that run so deep. If you just dig deep, which takes many people years to do, to even understand, you know, what is an electromagnetic field? What is radio frequency radiation? What, you know, wh wh how does all this work? I mean, that is how they've been able to uh, keep the wool over our eyes for so long. But all you have to do is know that the limits that we have are based on outdated science. They haven't changed in years and years. And not only that, I mean, this is before there was even Wi-Fi, these limits were put forward. This is before kids were using cell phones like kids have candy on Halloween. I mean, we didn't have the data. We have the data now. The data exists. It is published. This is peer-reviewed, published research, which has shown harm. And yet it is being ignored because these large groups of industry-tied, industry-connected groups are uh, just fabricating this assumption of safety when there really is no safety. And they are, you know, talking about COVID and 5G, which has nothing to do with this body of science which has existed for years and years and just keeps growing. So I ask you to please, please do the right thing because you know what the right thing is because you would never risk your family's health. Never. If there were this many scientists calling for caution, I mean, would you? If your kid was about to climb a tree and uh, someone was selling tickets to climb that tree and that person selling tickets said, hey, don't worry, it's completely safe. 
And then over there, you got like all these scientists who are saying no. And, and the, you know, the, the tree expert, uh, the tree biologist is like, no, don't, no, don't climb that tree. I'm telling you, the tree is going to fall. That tree is dead and it's going to fall. And the person selling the ticket says, oh, no, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Just climb this night's tree. Would you let your child climb that tree? Or would you just look around and find a safe tree to climb? I mean, that's the thing. Find a safe tree to climb. There are plenty of them out there. You don't need to be doing something which has this many, uh, you know, credible voices calling to, uh, to take action on. And then, of course, industry calls the scientists who are working on this um, discredited or fringe and all that. But if you take a look and actually look at who is speaking, you will see they, they are highly credentialed scientists who are speaking out on this. And let me tell you, when you speak out on this issue, you lose all your funding. So it is for the courageous and brave, and they are doing it. And at great personal cost, 